I am sure. And you are listening to Light Up with Shua, a weekly podcast to open our hearts and minds on a journey with me. Greetings and assalamu alaikum. You're watching Light Up with Shua. I'm your host. I hope you have already subscribed to my channel, Light Up with Shua. dot com and you can find us on YouTube and the Groton channel and also on Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, we have the links there and you can find the podcast on iTunes, YouTube, uh, Spotify and TuneIn Radio. So I have my very special guest today. Her name is Margaret and she will introduce herself and we'll go from there. Hi Margaret. Hi. How are you? I'm very well. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So, please could you introduce yourself? My name is Margaret Bullitt Jonas. I am an Episcopal priest and a retreat leader and a climate activist. And I my job title is Missioner for Creation Care mm. for the Episcopal Diocese of Western Massachusetts and also for the Massachusetts Conference of the United Church of Christ. Oh wow. So, it's big title it's an ecumenical job okay okay yeah. so how long have you been uh i've yeah. been in in this position about 5 years and i was ordained in the episcopal church 30 years ago this past spring wow yeah so what does it really mean to be ordained for people like me who don't really know that if you're not ordained then you can do certain things yeah um the sense in the in the episcopal church anyway the the sense is that everybody it has a vocation everybody has a gift to be shared with the world okay. um that god sent each of us here to be a blessing and our challenge as individuals is to figure out what is what is the gift that i can bring to the community and folks who are ordained in the episcopal church have a particular role of trying to guide the community of believers our brothers and sisters in christ The most traditional role is to be working in a congregation to be a parish priest and I did that for 25 years um but then 5 years ago I I was feeling increasingly um alarmed about the state of climate change in mm-hmm. particular and in general how we are treating mother earth okay um so I I went to my beloved bishop Doug Fisher and asked if perhaps they could create a position for me in the diocese um and he's a wonderful man a real leader on climate he said if we can find the money let's do it and just then a member of the diocese was coming forward who had just sold his stock in pipelines and wanted to donate the funds to the diocese to fund something to do with addressing the climate crisis and that became the initial seed wow. money for my job so i've been doing so this for 5 this years so this really says like the intentions how your intentions were spread out in the universe and somebody yeah. heard it yeah right that's right yeah and you got yeah. uh, the yeah. funding and you went on from there wonderful yeah. yeah so all right so how do you want to talk more about your uh, work or i think um do you want to mention your website Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um yes, I I s- launched a website 5 years ago called revivingcreation.org yes. and I put my sermons and articles and blog posts up there and I've written three books and so information oh, wow. and my event schedule all that is at revivingcreation. So yeah, we will put the link down for thank people you. to visit thank and you. all. So what are the books about? Well, the first book is a memoir which was published 20 years ago. It's a story of how it's basically my healing my healing journey story. It's a, a memoir. Uh it's called Holy Hunger: A Woman's Journey from Food Addiction to Spiritual Fulfillment. Um I could say something more about that. Yeah. Um and then the other two books are books of meditations. Um one is about Jesus's seven last words from the cross which um it was delivered initially as a series of of sermons mm. um after 911 okay. so it was um a reflection on the mercy and love of god that we experience as christians through jesus um 
And the last book is called Joy of Heaven to Earth Come Down, which is just a little tiny book of meditations oh, nice. about our relationship with the natural world oh. uh, and how God comes to us through the natural world and how we in turn can be healers of the natural world. Excellent. Thank you. So I think I would like to talk about... I did visit your website and it's really good in terms of, you know, if somebody wants to learn mm -hmm. and look at it. And, you know, I had actually looked at it and I said, okay, how does, uh, like, the the climate questions that you had, mm -hmm. um, the environment questions, like, how can we work to build a just and sustainable future? Mm -hmm. Like, and if you want to say something about it a little, how can people yeah. learn to, um, you know, take care of the earth, Mother yeah. Earth? I, I see caring for the earth as um, part of our, it's, I, I see it as a spiritual and an ethical issue. Uh, it's often in the dominant culture it's seen, we talk about climate change in political terms or in terms of science or economics. Mm -hmm. My perspective is more coming from a, a, a place of spirituality and morality, I would say, mm -hmm. of um, believing that as human beings we were sent here to be a blessing on the earth and we have in many ways, gotten lost. And it partly, I'll just say, part of this journey for me is a very personal one because my own um, story is I grew up, I, ended, I had a, an eating disorder early on in life, got in recovery through the grace of God when I was 30, and was so taken by this love that had saved my life and had healed my relationship between body, mind, and spirit, mm. that I, that's when I went off to seminary. Like, who is this God who just saved my life? And, okay. and uh, in the course of seminary, I, I realized I, f I felt vocation to be ordained um, and happened to be ordained in June of 1988, which was the same month that NASA climate scientist James Hansen, yeah. was testifying to the U.S. Senate that scientists were becoming increasingly concerned about greenhouse gas emissions, about burning coal, gas, and oil, and what it was doing to the health of our planet. And for some reason, God placed that on my heart, uh, and I was tracked. So this whole question about global warming became uh, interwoven with my, my ministry, um, and that summer, uh, my husband and I and his daughter went off to Alaska, fell in love with Alaska, had a beautiful trip. I then began my first job um, at a parish north of Boston, uh, working as a clergy person. And on Good Friday, um, which is, a, for Christians, a very holy day, a very somber, powerful day of, of, of reflecting on the suffering love of God, the way that God enters the suffering of our world and um, gives us strength and heals us in the midst of our suffering. So on that day of Good Friday was the day that the Exxon Valdez oil tanker crashed against a reef in Alaska and spilled millions of gallons of oil on the shoreline. And that was... I was shocked. I was appalled. I remember the images of the birds coated yes. in oil. And I had just been in Alaska, so I've, I took this very hard. And... So the next time it was my opportunity to, to preach, which was 10 days later, I stood up at the pulpit and preached my first ever sermon that I'd ever preached or ever heard about the relationship between being a person of faith, being a Christian, and the earth, mm. caring, for, caring for the environment. I'd never heard anyone talk about this before, but I, I poured everything I could into the sermon. Uh, at the end of the service... I was sort of pleased with myself. I thought I'd done a pretty good job. But at the end of the service, a woman came up to me and said, um, thank you for that wonderful sermon, but I don't really understand. What does religion have to do with ecology? Oh, wow. And okay. I realized that that became a guiding question for me mm. in my life because I feel that the two are connected, intimately connected. Yes. Yes. So it's from that place of um, spirit, of feeling that if God can heal one crazy addict... <laughs> Is it not possible that God might heal the, the whole, earth? Yeah. Or not, the, not only the earth, but human beings and our relationship with the earth, all these crazy human beings who don't know. We, uh, at this point, people who are paying attention to what's happening with species extinction and climate change, 
folks feel overwhelmed. Like, I don't, like, how are we going to, how are we going to turn this around? How are we going to find a new, a new path forward? Mm -hmm. And I believe it's through the grace of God. It's Mm -hmm. through opening ourselves to a deeper wisdom Mm -hmm. that uh, we will find a path forward. Uh, And that, that's what I'm giving my life, my life to is that search. Well, as we say, inshallah, which is God willing. Yes. So yes. I, I wish you yeah. the best in your efforts and uh, may God give you the strength to continue and people join you in, you know, in your journey. Thank you. Thank so you. That's very important. Yeah. Doesn't matter which religion you are from. Yeah. I think uh, Mother Earth or this planet is uh, shared by everybody. Mm. So mm. we all should be contributing and taking care of it, just like our own bodies. So, and if I might say, I do think that because as human beings, we all face this great challenge of can we keep the web of life intact? Can we keep human civilization going? We, like, we all face this challenge. It doesn't matter what religion we come from. I think that it has the, the, uh, presents us with the possibility of religions coming together in a new way, saying... Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have different ways of naming the divine. Yeah, we have different rituals and ceremonies. But deep down, we all are grateful for the gift of life. Deep down, we all love and intend to love each other and the earth. And so uh, in my experience of doing interfaith climate activism, I've been very moved to be standing shoulder to shoulder with people of different faiths than mine, different brands of Christianity, different faith traditions, entirely different faith traditions, and all of us speaking with one voice, mm. uh, saying, yes, as human beings, let's find a better way to live more lightly on the earth. Yeah. I, I find that very moving. I, while we're talking, I have a question coming up in my head. Is it like when you approached this issue, did you feel that this was uh, the responsibility of Christians? Or Christians can fix it? Or... Do you, like, do you see it like that, or do you see it that doesn't matter who, all humans are coming from one source, because human beings are human beings. We yeah. later decide who we are, or right. we are born into a home, whether it's a Christian or Hindu or a Muslim or a Jew or whoever. I, I guess my, well, my understanding of, well, first of all, I would say Christians alone cannot possibly... <laughs> address the climate. It's kind of an all-hands-on-deck moment. I, I speak primarily to Christians because th- these are my people. These are the folks whose mm-hmm. language I most understand, who most understand my language. And I mm. also feel that Christianity has a particular um, p- well, role to play, partly because we have, I believe, we need to repent from some of the ways that Christianity has been understood and mm-hmm. used Okay. in the past mm. to justify exploiting the earth. And there are, okay. even today there are Christians yeah. who will say that God has given us the earth, has given human beings the earth mm. to do whatever they want with. Uh, yeah. And I think that's a complete misunderstanding of what yeah. Christianity yeah. is about. Because, so, sorry yeah. to cut yeah, you, yeah. Uh, yeah. like natives, let's forget about everybody and talk about Native Americans. Like, I think they have been the closest and the most uh, intimate and the caretakers of the Mother yes. Earth, yes. right? Yes. And uh, actually they were doing fine and they respect the Earth and the creation, I think, more than anyone that I have understood. Yes. Now we all do, of course, but then, you know, taking the history into account and also, yeah, without going into too much detail at this I, moment. No, but, I agree, but we yeah. have a great deal to learn from our yeah. Native brothers Native, and sisters. Yes. Um, I went out to Standing Rock in December 2016 when mm-hmm. Chief Arval Looking Horse was calling on faith leaders of all kinds to mm-hmm. come stand with him mm-hmm. and in the fight against that pipeline. Yes. And I had the privilege of, um, I think it was last October, October 2017, of being part of a ceremony uh, here in Western Massachusetts, actually, at the Agape community. A lot of Native Americans came for St. Francis Day, including Chief Arval Looking Horse, and I helped to write and to lead a Christian ceremony of repentance for the doctrine of discovery, which is the doctrine back in the 15th century, uh, which 
gave uh, basically license mm -hmm. to Christians to exploit Native American peoples and territories. So we did a whole service of repenting and burning the Doctrine of Discovery and burying it under a tree. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel there's, a, there's work that Christians have to do to repent mm -hmm. very publicly. And we also have such wonderful, I believe, uh, gifts to offer, as does every faith tradition, to okay. say, let's dig into the riches of our respective traditions and find what is the wisdom that we can bring forward so that we can save life on earth. That's very important. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I have so many other questions, but I would like to touch upon some... Um, so this this emotion, this uh, sentiment that you have for Earth mm. shows then when we say Mother Earth, right? Mm. So I know that you are a mother as well, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so let's touch on that because I guess yes. you must be, uh, you're a good uh, person to ask because you're taking care of your children or they must mm. be grown up now, but you have been through that process. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you can really understand how the Earth feels mm -hmm. about itself, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now that you take care of yourself, how would, do you think that Mother Earth or the Earth also takes care of itself if we don't or do? It just came up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to well, answer tell, that question. I, I, I tell, one thing, I, I, I used to frame it um, when I would go around, I, you know, I travel around preaching and talking mm -hmm. and leading retreats about we need to care for the earth. Uh -huh. And I, I've tended to frame it as it's our job to save the earth. And lately I've been trying to focus much more on the mutuality of it. The more we, okay. well, to begin the other way, the more we receive healing from the earth, allow just the way people feel better when they go outside mm -hmm. and walk with near trees or see a stretch mm -hmm. of a lake or a mountain. Mm -hmm. um, the more we receive that healing from Mother Earth, the more then we feel strengthened and empowered to, right. in turn, serve right. her. But the whole archetype of Mother is very important to me in my, in my prayer life, in my literal motherhood of a okay. beloved son. So why don't you tell us about your, you know, how many children you have, how is your relationship with your children and yeah. all. So sure. let's, let's begin with that um, a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm blessed. I have a son who is in his late 20s. Okay. Um, my husband and I also have a, had a daughter who died shortly after birth. Um, and I have a wonderful stepdaughter um, and who in turn has two teenage kids. So I'm a I don't like being a step grandmother, so I think I think of like okay, yeah, I'm, a I'm a bonus grandmother, or okay. I'm just a grandmother. Oh, nice, um, bonus grandmother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, how is your relation relationship with your children and your grandchildren? Um, I I married late in life, and I knew that um, I really wanted to be a mother, uh, and I knew I was going to have issues around infertility. So, the minute that my husband and I got married, I immediately. Started had the surgery, had the hormone. I just went through, we went through big medical treatment. Um, and we had just gotten to the point of, you know, we have to quit the job. This is, I was just, start, we were just starting to look into adopting mm -hmm. uh, when we got pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so I think of Sam as, it's like Christmas every, he's like my Christmas, Christmas present every day. Okay. I, I just feel incredibly blessed to have, a child. Um, I have learned so much about love mm -hmm. and letting go and paying attention and self-care. I, I feel like I've learned so much through the process of, mm -hmm. of mothering Sam. So and the disorder was before the children? Yes, thank right? God. I got in, okay. I got in recovery uh, mm -hmm. when I was 30, uh, married my husband the day after my 35th birthday. So I was So that is I was, late. You so think. I was late. I was I, I just yeah. wanted to make yeah. sure I was yeah. going to ask you because yeah. is that late for you or is that late from which point from the bearing children point of view? Well, it was it, I feel like you know the traditional trajectory that we you know you get married in your 20s and mm -hmm. I I just I wasn't on any good timeline that way. I got mm -hmm. in recovery which thanks be to God then my I feel like my real true honest life began mm -hmm. and then uh Married at 35, okay. and immediate, and was blessed to have Sam when I was 38. Okay. And, Good. Yeah. 
All right. Um, so you, I would say we will describe you as a conscious parent because you knew you were going to get... Oh, it was your, very, you know, very, he was conscious. very much a wanted child. And I, yeah. yeah. And so did you prepare for that? Like to become a mother and what you need to be and all that? Did, or did, was it uh, learning on the job? Uh, well, <laughs> um, I felt I had a lot of learning to do, and my husband had already parented a child, okay. and I remember him telling when I, I you know, I'd be worrying, like, oh, I'm not going to know how to take care of a baby. I don't know anything about babies, and I have to read books about babies, and so, of course, that's what I did, because I'm, I'm, I'm a reader. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and he told me, you know, the baby... The, the child will teach you how to be a mother. So that was a wonderful piece of oh. advice mm. of learning. Yes, it's helpful to get coaching and mentoring mm. and learn what you can. But I also, he was helping me notice, it's also about being in relationship with that particular, particular mm. little person and trusting that in the relationship, if I'm paying attention, then you will I will learn. I will, yeah. there, there will be some, we'll, yeah. we'll be learning from each other. Yeah. And that, that was definitely my experience. That's a very good point. And I think, I do believe that because yeah. every child is unique. Even yeah. if your yeah. three children yeah. will be different, yeah. even biologically that you had yeah. two, yeah. you know, yeah. would have, uh, you know, yeah. uh, after you lost your daughter. But yeah. so I have two boys and I know that they're totally different, mm. you know. Mm. So, yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter how many books you read and all, but yeah. that, that is helpful to know. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. So how do you how did you spend time with them? Were you already becoming? So you were ordained. Yep, I right? was already. I was. I was married. I was ordained, and so yeah. I was working. Um, so I was working part time, uh, yeah. and just figuring like, yeah. out how, so to, how, did you how manage? to do the, how yeah. to do that. And, and yeah. you know, at this point in my life, this was a long time ago. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I was. I, I stayed. I took a break from work for some stretch of time, some stretch of months. And realized that being a full-time stay-at-home mom, I was a better parent if I had some piece of time away. Okay. I think the burden we place on mothers, especially mothers, to be alone in a home with a child, I think it's just, it's not a natural way to raise mm. a family. I, I, I'm imagining days of tribes when you had multiple adults. I think that's a much healthier way to raise okay. young ones. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we, f we figured out other arrangements. So I could go away and do some work and then come back and be with Sam. And, mm. um, and Sam is your son. Sam's our son. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's a great, great person. I'm very, very proud of him. Yeah. And I, yeah. and I feel like being a mother is, is for life. And it just, it just changes. The mm -hmm. form of it changes over time, depending. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember I was bereft when he, uh, graduated from high school and set off for college. And I knew, of course, I'm proud he's going off to college. It's wonderful. But I thought that Did empty, you feel the empty that, nest yeah. syndrome, I thought yeah. that is like such a trivial way of naming yeah. what it feels like when this yeah. young person yeah. launches. Into so what do you like about your son? I would, the first, I, I would, he has a good heart. He has okay. a good heart. He how, is, can, how can you tell somebody has a good heart? He is kind mm. um, to you. Yeah, yeah, or, but not just to, not just to, to me. Just to, I, I see him just being. Kind. <laughs> I know. I'm asking yeah, very yeah, obvious questions, has, but maybe he has real integrity. Okay. Um, okay. He tells the truth. Um, okay. uh, he was anyway. No, no. Listening to a mother just oh, yeah. go on and on about her <laughs> child. I don't know. Um, but I just remember when he was captain of his uh -huh. of his tennis team in high school mm. and watching him coach his friends. Mm. He um, and then. He, he loves community. He's a, he's a real community builder and thrives in the midst of community. Um, and he's someone who's great with with kids. So he's mm -hmm. at this point he's a teacher. He's mm -hmm. teaching in uh, fourth grade, mm -hmm. uh, fourth grade kids. Okay. So, yeah. what does he like about you? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you know about I him, don't know. <laughs> and if he. If he is in a good relation with you, then he sh you should know what he likes about you. One thing that he likes about you? Uh, I think he knows he can rely on me okay. and he can count so you're on you're dependable. Me. I'm dependable. Aren't, uh, aren't you, know, you he, supposed to be because you're a mother? Isn't, I guess doesn't I'm, that come with the I guess territory? It, come, it comes with the territory, <laughs> yeah. Well, he, and he knows I'm sincerely interested in his life. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Um, 
I guess we have to have another session with you because we haven't uh, even touched on many of the questions <laughs> yet. But um, I would like to say, um, how would you rate yourself as a parent before I go to, you know? How would I rate myself as yeah. a parent? I wouldn't rate myself as a parent. Okay. Um, I'm not going to rate myself. I think what I will say, though, about being a parent, because I want to say a little bit, just if I have a little, yeah, another sure, minute, sure, a, sure. about the archetype of the mother. Mm -hmm. um, I, I One moment I remember with Sam, very it, years when he was an infant, I remember mm -hmm. a night when I was absolutely exhausted, mm -hmm. and he, he needed to be nursed in the middle of the night, and I sort of s stumbled into his room, or where, I can't remember how far away he was sleeping from us at that point, and I was nursing him, and I was feeling absolutely exhausted. Mm -hmm. And I felt as I rocked in the rocking chair that I was leaning against Divine Mother. So that I've, I just have a sense of, as a mother, that I very much draw from, and as a human being, I very consciously draw from my sense of a Divine okay. Mother. Mm -hmm. um, and I love, there's a Buddhist who says, um, who speaks about being the mother of each moment. Uh, that if we live with conscious awareness, mm -hmm. we are intending to be mm -hmm. the mother of each moment, which mm -hmm. to me says something about approaching each moment with the attention and the tenderness, the firmness mm -hmm. of a good mother. Okay. Well, we shall be talking to Margaret again. Uh, I would like to end our first uh, session and please stay tuned for the second part of our interview with Margaret. Thank you. Thank you for staying with me through this exciting episode. Please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode of Light Up with Schwa.